what we have here is a Logan 9B17. It's a 9-inch uh, metal lathe with the automatic apron, 17 inches between center. Um, and this particular lathe was made, I believe, in 1963. I've had it in storage uh, for several years now and just took it out and um, thought I'd try and get it into trim here. So one of the things that's always bothered me about this lathe is that if you, well, right down here, there's a plug that uh, drains the oil well for the automatic apron here for the power feed mechanism. And uh, while I'm getting this ready, I thought what I would do is go ahead and pull that out and see if we can't seal it up like we did on the 11 inch lathe so that it doesn't leak anymore. Uh, and so that's what we're going to do. And while we have it off the machine, we'll, we'll take a look at the insides and we'll take a peek behind the apron here. Hopefully this will be of use to other people who have a similar um, apron to this if they uh, have need to pull it apart and work on it. Uh, we're trying to add to the body of knowledge on these Logan lathes, so uh, I'll pull it off and take it over to the bench. But a couple of things I wanted to show that I thought were interesting. One is the, uh, the dial here. This dial, believe it or not, on this 9-inch lathe is larger than the dial on the 11 inch. And so it's easier to see. And I, I was wondering why this lathe was always such a pleasure to work on. Well, that's one reason is because you could see things better. This one with the power feeds has a different setup for uh, retaining oil. And you have to have oil in here in order to, uh, uh, to, to make the uh, clutch mechanism work. And if you recall, in the 11 inch lathe. If you haven't seen that video uh, and you're interested in this kind of thing, you can go back and take a look at it. But it has a clamshell where there's two castings that are mated. And that's um, uh, what I did there in order to keep it from leaking was um, put a gasket sealer between the two halves. And it worked fine. It doesn't leak. This one has always leaked. And uh, I'm not sure if it's out of the uh, plug here or if it's uh, out of the uh, cover, but what we're going to do is we're going to put that same gasket material because it's really annoying to have a leak there and you fill it up with oil and it just leaks all over your, uh, your machine. So we're going to pull this off and take a quick look at the, how this is sealed up. And this also tells you that when you fill it with oil, I mean, you really don't have to fill it um, higher than this right here. It, so it doesn't take much oil to get the oil bath that it needs to have the clutch operate. And there's the gasket right there. Not much to it. Um, Matter of fact, it's awfully thin for a gasket. I don't, I don't know if this is the original one or if it's been replaced by somebody, but if it is a replacement, then certainly hasn't done the job very well. Um, for clutch mechanism, you see the, the difference between uh, disengaged there. Let's see if I can get that in a better light here. Okay, so there it is. There's the clutch. Uh, when you engage it, as we saw on the other one, there's a uh, disc in here that has ridges and when you turn the handle you can see it pop in and out. There it goes in, there it goes back out. So there it's engaged and you have power feed, there it's not. And that's all the movement there is in there to make this thing work. And um, back out here just a little bit you can kind of see engaged That's all there is. Well, we got the uh, apron back off. It turned out that, in fact, I was able to fix the leak uh, of the oil out the, uh, from behind. If you recall, we had the uh, cover here, and it was leaking. 
Uh, so we put a gasket on there and it didn't leak. Uh, but then when I tried to operate the uh, power feed and the clutch, uh, when you disengage, the power feed would continue. And so it's, you know, it's supposed to go off right when you disengage. And uh, I got to thinking it's probably been sitting in storage, this little lathe has been uh, moved several times and uh, it probably needs a good cleaning uh, through the clutch mechanism. I thought, well, as long as I'm doing that, um, let's go ahead and add to the body of knowledge of uh, La Logan lathes and, uh, and we'll just tear it down, take a look at it here um, in this video. Now what I've done is I pulled a few things off of here uh, just for purposes of illustration. I pulled the half nuts off the back. Normally, you'd have the half nuts uh, here, and uh, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. I didn't want to pound out all of the, the uh, different parts here, so I did not uh, pull this off and some of the other stuff. What I did take off was this gear here, which is an idler gear, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. It fits back in here and uh, engages with the clutch sends the power either longitudinally or uh, through the cross feed. And then the other one was this gear here, which comes out of the top. And I did, uh, did take that out. Let's see, it actually would go like, no, that's right. It would go like that. And if you do disassemble this, just be aware, there's a set screw right here that holds this gear in place. And so, um, you have to take that out first or you won't be able to get the gear out. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this apart and take a look at it, see how we, what kind of damage we can do here. And I've already loosened some of these things up so they'd be pretty easy to take off. This is a, the other gem nut. And we can lift off the uh, lever and the handle here. And inside this part we have well, we've got a washer, we've got a ball bearing, thrust bearing, and another washer. And notice on this, similar to the 11-inch uh, lathe that we looked at, the Logan, this also has the uh, grooves here. You can see that, there it is. It's got the grooves, um, and when you're not engaging the power feed, uh, the grooves are engaged with the ridges on this. Um, and this is the friction washer. And there's only one way to put it on because there are two studs that stick up here on the friction washer. And there's two, well, there's a, a groove here cut across. So. There's only one way to install this. And next is the true arc ring in the uh, parts diagram, which is just another name for a circlip or a uh, uh, snap ring. So that's what we have there. I'll replace that. And then this friction washer comes off like that. There's a washer, another ball bearing, thrust washer, and a washer underneath that. And again, let's just take a look at how these mate. You have um, ridges on this one and grooves on this one. And when you put them together, um, they fit like that. When you engage the clutch or the power feed, you're moving it up off of, off of the uh, grooves into the ridges. And so you've got, I don't know, 30, 40 thousandths there. Uh, and that's all you need to engage the power feed. Well, at this point, looking at the parts diagram, the um, shaft here and all of the internals to the clutch assembly should just come right out. There's nothing holding them in. 
uh, the reality is that um, they don't want to come out for some reason. I'm not sure why. And so I took my most gentle mallet I could find, and we're going to tap those out. And at some point, we tapped it out far enough where we can just pull out the uh, shaft, the clutch discs, the Belleville the retainer, and there's that whole assembly there. Now, I've already gone through this and cleaned it up and uh, oiled it up so it's ready to go back in. But looking at this now, I'm unable to pull out the worm gear, you can see it, uh, it does turn, and I'm unable to get out the uh, sleeve gear here, and it turns independently, or it should. Yeah, there it goes. You can see this turns independently of the worm gear until you engage the power feed, at which point it'll uh, tighten them up and they'll, uh, they'll become one unit. Well, while we have this apart, let's take a quick look at the mechanism, uh, in particular the blockout mechanism here that prevents you from engaging the half nuts and the power feed at the same time. So you can open and close the half nuts here. And it wrote these, these pins uh, right on the grooves here and you can see if this is not engaged you have the groove here and the pin is free to move over when you engage the power feed like so. So now you can't engage the half nuts. In a similar way when the half nuts are engaged you can't engage the power feed. So one blocks the other out. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, and I'll put that back on here in a minute. And basically what we are doing with the power feed, if I can get this in a, in a decent light here. Okay, if you can see this gear down here at the bottom, right here. They're calling that the sleeve gear. Get that in the light very well. It's kind of dark down in there, but anyway, trust me, there's a gear there, and when the power feed's engaged, that's tied. To the worm gear here, so as the power, as the lead screw turns, turns the worm gear here, uh, it's engaged with this sleeve gear. So when we put this into the, uh, this position, this idler gear engages with the gear here, uh, and this, this is attached to the rack, and so it moves um, longitudinally along the bed. If, on the other hand, you engage the other direction, this now engages with the little gear here, and it's tied to the big gear, which goes up into the uh, crossfeed and powers the crossfeed. So that's kind of how all that fits together. And I think right now we're at the point where we can put it all back and see what it looks like when we try it on the machine. Okay, here's how it came out of the clutch assembly. You've got the uh, discs, and these alternate, uh, similar to the 11-inch lathe, between an internal tooth and an external tab like that. So one, then the other, then one, then the other. 
and we'll put them back here in a minute. You'll see how those go back in. There are a total of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight of these, looks like to me. And then comes, I get the spring, then comes the Belleville washer here, and it goes in that kind of an orientation. The clutch retainer here, and then this is all apart. Okay, now we're ready to install the rest of the um, discs and put it back together. And we're going backwards from front to back. So it started out with the tooth gear. You put in an external tab gear, internal tooth, alternate those till all eight of them are in place. And then the Belleville goes in there shaft with the spring and the retainer go on next. So we've got our first thing to go in is the, uh, the washer, the bearing, ball bearing thrust washer, and the second washer. And after those three are in place, we have the uh, friction washer here. And you see there's two studs here and two holes and so that would go in and fit there it is and notice that the ridges are facing forward I think you can see that I got a better light there we go so the ridges are facing forward the, the, uh, at this point we put in our uh, snap ring and the old snap ring uh, kind of got buggered up a little bit when I pulled it out I mean I've been in there since 1963 and uh, so anyway I went down to the store got another one and I went in I asked uh, the man uh, I need to buy a uh, snap ring he says cool uh, how many I said well I, I only need one he said well I can't sell you one I can sell you Matter of fact, I can't sell you a bunch of this size. I can sell you a kit that has all kinds of different sizes of this, uh, of snap rings. And one of them will probably fit what you're doing. So that's what I had to do. Let's go ahead and get the uh, pliers on there. Okay, next comes the handle, and there's only one way it can go. There's a, a big groove here that fits over the, um, the, the stud there. So it goes on like that. And another washer. Another thrust bearing and one more washer. Once all that's on there, we can go ahead and put on the jam nut here. Or the, this is the, the nut that adjusts the tension. This is the jam nut here. And we don't even need that on there at this point uh, to test it. There's, there's no tension at all on that. So we're gonna have to Take it in, okay, so we took it in so far that it, we can't engage the power feed at this point. We're going to back this off a little bit, oops, Okay. 
Okay, so there it is. We're going to go ahead and put the jam nut on, um, and we'll do the final adjustment over on the machine itself. Uh, Alright, we're back here at the Logan 9B, and we've got the carriage uh, reinstalled, the apron. And if you recall, what we did over at the bench is we adjusted the adjustment nut here on the uh, power feed until we could not engage the power feed. Uh, if you recall those the, the ridges and whatnot, uh, it was too tight so that it could not pull off of the ridges. Then I backed it off a little bit until we could. We've installed it on the machine now, and actually, it um, it seems to operate pretty good. You can see the uh, longitudinal feed works, and when you turn it off, disengage, it stops. Same thing with the cross feed. Engages, disengages, and that's what I was looking for. The leak that we had underneath has been fixed as well, so it doesn't drip oil down into the uh, chip pan here. Alright, the last thing to do then is to put the jam nut on so the adjustment nut doesn't move. And that's a simple matter of uh, holding the adjustment nut in place and then tightening the jam nut. So we're good to go. This machine's ready to put back in service.